begin the Pirate Vector Lab by using four plain white sheets of paper. You don't need a whole lot of masking tape to hold your map together. Count the clues in your bottle. There should be 19 clues per lab group. The reason we're going to take four pieces of paper and tape them together is so that we can think of this arrangement as if it were the X and the Y coordinate system on a graph. Think of this as coordinate 1, 2, 3, and 4 if you like, if you wish something to relate it to from the land of mathematics. It's important that we put one pace is equal to one centimeter on there. We're going to measure one centimeter away from either the X or the Y it doesn't matter which area you happen to put that in, but please don't put that starting dot on the line or on the crack or on the fold in this particular arrangement. Now we're going to fold up the pieces of paper very conveniently when we're done so that we can take them with us. If the first clue that you drew said go four paces south, you would draw a line four centimeters long since one pace is represented by one centimeter. Make sure you put an arrowhead on your vector to show direction south. If the first clue that you drew happened to be something that wasn't numerical, please draw another one from the bottle and put that one back. draw a clue that says, draw a spyglass here, you should draw a spyglass on your pirate vector map. Please include all such clues that do not have numbers or direction. For example, if you also draw the clue, squint your eyes and mutter, storms a brewing, you would include the phrase, storms a brewing. You stand up, squint your eyes, shade them, and say, storms are brewing. If you choose two such clues at the same time in succession from the bottle, please put one back, shuffle the deck, so to speak, and draw another. When you're all done, connect the starting location which has been initiated with an X, and the ending location, which also has an X, connect the two X's and you should have a diagonal or a resultant vector. Please split this resultant vector into its X and Y components. Or said another way, drop a perpendicular from both points. I've put two maps on my drawing to show that they're superimposed over one another, and all I wish to show is that no two maps are going to look the same. Yours will not look the same as any other map in the class. When you're all done with your map, you should add up all of the north vectors, south vectors, east vectors, and west vectors. Combine the north and the south vectors to get one answer. Combine the east and the west vectors to get one answer. Those pace values should agree with what you drew on your map for your resultant vectors. See if they do. When you've completed your map, you should add to it the three rules of vector addition. Now remember, a rule of vector addition is not a vocabulary definition. For example, if I say that a vector has both magnitude and direction, that is not a rule of addition. Please give me three rules of vector addition. <laughs> 